Hello and welcome to today's video. In this presentation, you will learn about breast augmentation surgery and how to best prepare for it. This information has been produced by Yunhee International Hospital and is intended for general information only. The information presented in these slides does not replace personal advice from a qualified or experienced cosmetic surgeon. Over time, factors such as aging, pregnancy, genetic predispositions, sun exposure, and weight fluctuation may cause the shape and size of a woman's breasts to change. Women who are discontent with the size and shape of their breasts can achieve fuller and more curvaceous breasts after augmentation. During breast augmentation, an implant is positioned inside a pocket created within the breast tissue. This can balance breast size, increase breast volume, and restore the natural shape of the breast. If you're experiencing significant drooping or sagging, you may need a breast lift surgery, which can be done in concordance with a breast augmentation. A woman may choose to undergo breast augmentation surgery for several reasons. To enhance body curves and overall appearance, to balance breast size if a prominent difference between the breasts exists, to correct a decrease in breast volume after pregnancy and weight loss, or to replace previous breast implants for aesthetic or reconstructive purposes. Breast augmentation can result in fuller breast volume and a generally enhanced and rejuvenated bosom. This procedure is usually carried out under general anesthesia. This means you will be asleep during your operation and will feel no pain. Once you are asleep, your surgeon will begin the procedure by making an incision. There are three main options for breast implant incisions. Breast implants may be inserted by way of a small incision under the breast, inframammary, around the nipple area, periareolar, or under the arm, transaxillary. Incisions are created in concealed locations to reduce visible scarring. The choice of incision depends on your surgeon's preference or training, your anatomy, your goals, and the type and size of your implants. Breast implants differ by shape, texture, and profile. Breast implants may be round or contoured and may have a smooth or textured surface. The breast implant profile, which describes the projection of the breast from the chest wall, may be standard, moderate, or high. Lastly, breast implants vary by size or volume. The type, style, and size of the breast implants you choose are determined by your lifestyle, body contours, amount of breast tissue you have, and the cup size and appearance that you would like to achieve. Be sure to talk with your doctor in depth about choosing the breast implant option that is right for you. There are two options for breast implant placement. With subglandular placement, the implant is located between your chest muscle and breast tissue under the glands. This placement may help reduce your surgery and recovery time. It may be less painful than submuscular placement and may make your breast implants easier to access if corrective surgery is necessary. Implants that are subglandular may be easier to see and feel through your skin. Submuscular placement means that your breast implants are placed partially or wholly under the pectoralis major chest muscle. Submuscular implants may result in a longer, more painful recovery than subglandular implants. Submuscular placement may result in less natural feeling implants and may reduce the risk of developing capsular contracture as well as offer easier mammographic imaging of the breast. Bear in mind that you will be able to choose your preferred type of implant with the aid of your surgeon during consultation. After the implants are placed, incisions are closed using sutures, skin adhesives, or surgical tape. Non-dissolving sutures can be removed 7 to 10 days after surgery. Scars will fade gradually over many months, but can take a year or more to fade completely. Expect to experience some pain, swelling, and discomfort. Most swelling generally subsides within a few days. Some swelling and discomfort may continue for several weeks. You will be asked to wear a compression bra or garment, 
which provides support and comfort, minimizes swelling, and preserves the position of the implants. You may return to work within three to seven days after surgery, but should avoid strenuous activity for three to four weeks. Results will be observed after swelling has subsided. Understand that the shape of your breasts will change over time. Results of the surgery are generally long-lasting, so your breasts should possess a fuller and shapelier look for many years. Preparing for a breast enlargement surgery has many benefits. Planning in advance will help ensure an uneventful surgery and a better healing process. Most importantly, planning ahead significantly reduces the probability and severity of the risks and complications of the procedure. In this section, we will give you practical ideas that will help you prepare for your breast augmentation surgery. Your surgeon will provide you with more detailed instructions during your consultation. It is extremely important to choose the right surgeon or cosmetic surgery hospital for you. You can do your research online by performing a standard search of surgeons and hospitals. Look for qualifications, certifications, reviews, and testimonials from previous patients. Once you find a surgeon or hospital you are comfortable with, ask as many questions as you can. Consume a balanced and healthy diet before surgery. Wound healing relies on a sufficient availability of nutrients. Construction of new tissues requires carbohydrates, fats, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Carbohydrates supply energy needed for cellular activity. Proteins provide the raw materials essential for repair and replacement of tissues. Vitamins and minerals are needed for synthesis of new materials such as collagen and hemoglobin. The body's ability to fight infection also depends on the availability of vitamins and minerals. Stop smoking. The relationship between smoking and delayed wound healing is well established in medical practice. The components of cigarette smoke hamper expeditious wound healing. Nicotine constricts blood vessels, which decreases blood flow to the skin, resulting in poor delivery of nutrients and impaired healing. Nicotine also interferes with the propagation of red blood cells and other cells of the immune system. Carbon monoxide decreases the transport of oxygen and its metabolism, while hydrogen cyanide blocks the enzyme systems required for energy production. Have everything organized before your surgery. Make sure monthly bills, shopping, and care assistance are arranged. This reduces possible stress and anxiety after surgery and enables you to relax and focus on your recovery. Stop taking non-maintenance medications or vitamins that affect the clotting of blood at least two weeks before surgery. These include aspirin-containing products, anti-inflammatories, and vitamin E. You can start taking a multivitamin and vitamin C to help in the healing process. Buy loose clothing to be used on the day of surgery. This will enable you to change clothes easily after your procedure. A successful breast enlargement procedure depends largely on your preparation. Have realistic goals and expectations and ensure your body is prepared for the surgery. Your surgery will be most successful if you choose a procedure or implant that is suitable for your body type and health. Unsatisfied patients are often not properly prepared or realistic in their idea of the changes their body will undergo. If you follow some of the suggestions and general recommendations outlined in this presentation, your surgery will more likely be successful and offer you many years of satisfaction and fulfillment.